I recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, for five minutes. Mr. Secretary, you told Senator Schmidt yesterday that if the 8,000 plus service members who've been separated from the military due to the vaccine mandate want to reapply, that they're welcome to do so, but that you would do nothing to solicit their reapplication or to incentivize it. Why is that? I think it's incumbent upon the individual to, to make that decision and reapply. The, the mechanisms are there. Yeah, but why don't, I mean, you're overseeing a recruiting nightmare in our military right now. These are 8,000 patriots. And by the way, your department broke the law in administering the vaccine mandate. And that's not me saying so. That's the inspector general for the Department of Defense who wrote in, on June 2nd of 2022, we found a trend of generalized assessments rather than the individualized assessment that is required by federal law. The department did not break the law. Uh, the so the DO, so wait, wait, wait. The you mean the IG mandate, is wrong? You think the, the IG is wrong? Mandate he says he broke the law. The lives of a number of, uh, of well, it ruined the lives of a number of people too, and it ruined the lives of people who love our country and want to reenlist. Let me ask you this question: If we direct you by force of law to reengage and incentivize the reenlistment of these folks with full back pay and rank, do you have the capability to follow that instruction? You put uh, provisions in the law. Uh, to enable those uh, those people to to uh, those former service members to reapply in accordance with the service man service. Good. Uh, well, we will do that just like we had to put the repeal of the vax mandate in the law. And I get the sense that the only reason you're not reaching out to these folks is pride, because otherwise they would be totally able to serve. And it seems that your personal pride is getting in the way. So going from the deeply serious things that we're not doing re-engaging these 8,000 folks to the deeply unserious things that we are doing. Go ahead and put up the first slide. I, I guess my question is, how much taxpayer money should go to fund drag queen story hours on military bases? You know, drag, drag queen story hours is not something that uh, the department funds. Well, wait a second. Uh, that's actually not what the record seems to suggest. You were going to fund one at Ramstein Air Force Base. That one got canceled, but that's DOD insignia. That's a drag queen story hour for children. Then also at uh, Malstrom Air Force Base outside of Great Falls, Montana, you had a, a drag queen story hour for kids. At the Joint Base Langley Eustis, you put on a drag queen story hour on a Saturday for the first ever kid-friendly diversity, equity, inclusion summer festival. And at Nellis Air Force Base, you had the Drag U Nellis on June 17th. Who funded these things, Mr. Secretary? Listen, uh, drag shows and, uh, are not something that the Department of Defense uh, supports or funds. So. Well, wait, why, why are they happening on military bases? I just, I just showed you the evidence. Why are they happening? I will say again. This is not something that we support or fund. Well, you, so you think hosting a drag queen story hour on a military base isn't supporting the drag queen story hour? I stand by what I just said. But, but you may stand by it, but it's belied by the evidence over and over again. I mean, are, 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 are you aware of the uh, piece? Uh, Biden's military, Air Force Base in Montana, holds drag show, drag queen story hour for kids in the Western Journal. Are you aware of that? Again, I will but, say what I've said yeah, You're saying what you're saying, but I guess it just doesn't comport with the facts. General Milley, this will be my last time to question you. You mentioned two years ago that you wanted to better understand white rage. And so my question is this, did you read this book? No, not at all. What is, well, it, what, it, it, it is, a, what is white privilege is the book, and it's actually written by a DOD official, a senior official in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and there are now hundreds of these books in dozens of schools, and I wonder if you guys connect this to your problems with recruiting. I've never read it, never seen it. Um, I, frankly, I don't even think about that stuff. I think about well, put up the next. Put, go ahead and put up the next about slide. about the readiness of the force. Go ahead and put up the next slide, please. Okay, well, in, in the next slide, this is a tweet by one of your employees in charge of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and it's, it's patently racist. They say that uh, she had to give Karen the business, that she talks about caudacity, presumably of Caucasian people. So I guess, terrible. why does the... I, I, look at it. Well, why is that person like You're not going to get an argument from me. That's terrible. It's wrong. She shouldn't be doing that, period. Should she be fired? I don't... That's a DOD employee, not U.S. military uniform. Do okay. I, Should they be I would, fired, would Secretary I Austin? 
uh, again, as you heard in your uh, subcommittee here, uh, this, this incident was investigated and, uh, and, and they're courses. still employed. Mr. Chairman, I have a series of unanimous consent requests since my time has expired. What objection? Uh, for, first is Joint Base Langley Eustis holds a drag show at Kid Friendly Festival. And the next is U.S. Military Defends Drag Show at Largest Training Center as, quote, essential to morale. And the next is Nellis Air Force Base hosts first ever drag queen show, essential to morale and readiness. That's a Breitbart piece. And uh, finally, Ramstein cancels library's drag queen story time for Pride Month following criticism. Well, objection, so order. Gentlemen's time's expired. Can I just, can I get copies of those? Because I'd like to take a look at those myself, actually. Take a look and, and find out what actually is going on there. Because I, that's the first I'm hearing about that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't read those news stories. I don't know what you're talking about. I'd like to take a look at those because I don't agree with those. Well, they're think, now in I think the official record. Shouldn't be happening. Period. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for that admission. Great. I, I would like to point out, uh, Chairman, that uh, our our students in Dodia schools scored the highest on uh, the eighth graders and fourth graders scored the highest in math and reading in the country. So I want to thank uh, all of the all of our Dodia uh, professionals who made that possible, and I encourage them to keep it up. Well, I hope you're not thanking that one. Yeah. Gentlemen, time's expired.